So we have our scaled application working. The load balancer has an SSL certificate. It's bouncing traffic between the two app servers. Our app servers are able to connect to the cache and the database servers. What I wanna do next is just see the changes I wanna to make to these servers to make them a little more efficient. And some of this is stuff we covered in previous videos, but also some stuff here is gonna be specific to Forge. And I have a few recipes that I use and reuse for this job. Now, my servers for Hackerslate, I have a disable services script and we'll view that. And this is just a single server site. Everything is on the server, so the database and Redis and all that. But I turned off the things I don't use. And that is Postgre, Memcache. I'm not using Redis in that case. I actually have Redis running, but because the server is on AWS for servers for hackers.com, I'm using Elasticache, which is AWS's hosted Redis. Same thing with my SQL. I'm using AWS's RDS and Beanstalk. So I can turn all of this off and save all these resources on my servers for hackers server. And at the same time, I also change the process management configuration to be able to handle more traffic. So that's all in my recipe for my servers for hackers.com server. Let's see what we do for the rest of my servers here for our scaling Laravel series. I'll start with the app server and it'll look pretty familiar. So we're gonna disable unused services. That'll be Beanstalk, Memcache, and Redis. And there's no databases installed on the server because we told it not to install any, so I don't need to turn those off. And we just run systemctl, which is the command in Ubuntu, Ubuntu 16.04 and greater, to disable services. And I stop it, so this will stop Beanstalk and Memcache and Redis, and then disable it. And disabling it makes it so these don't start back up when the server reboots. So it's two actions there, stop it and then disable the service. So I do it for Beanstalk, Memcache, Redis, and that's it. And then I adjust PHP process management just by doing some find and replaces. That's what the sed command is gonna do. So it's gonna find the configuration here and it knows I'm using PHP 7.1. You have to change this if you're gonna use a different version of PHP. And the www.comp file is just where those configuration is for the process management for PHP as I explained in other videos. And I just increase some of these values. So max children is 10 and so the default four, I believe it is. Start servers is four instead of the default two, I think, one or two. More min spare servers, more max spare servers, and a max request of a thousand. I won't go over the details of this because I explained those in previous videos. And then we just restart the PHP 7.1 FPM service so that these changes get sucked in. So those get applied to both application servers. So we can run this first app server recipe by clicking the run button here and just select what servers to run it on. And this is for the app server, so I'm just going to run it on both our application servers here. While it's running, I'm gonna move on to our MySQL server and cache server. And we have worker server here, which we'll deal with a little later. So the MySQL server is very similar. It shuts down services that are not used. So Nginx and PHP FPM are not used in this case. Beanstalk's not used, Redis is not used. All that's left here is the MySQL server, and that is remaining on and running since it doesn't get shut off here. So we can go ahead and run that against the database server. And then finally, we have the cache server, which is almost exactly like MySQL, except it doesn't stop Redis because Redis is the service we're using. So we can go ahead and run that against our cache server. If we go back to the Forge server here and we'll see our log here, we see running recipe on some of these. So our app servers, they got ran. So let's head on over to our database server and we're just gonna log in by the IP address. So PSAUX, we're gonna get a huge list of stuff. We're gonna search for MySQL and make sure MySQL is running, and it is. We can see it here running. And some of the stuff we turned off was Beanstalk. So I'll just search for Bean. We don't have any output. Now this is actually just the results of running grep itself. So you can actually get rid of that with this little trick of adding the first character in brackets like that. And we can just make sure that works by doing this. We can see we found MySQL D, which is running, and it didn't include the grep itself as one of the processes. So that's just a neat trick when you're searching for stuff. We saw Beanstalk was not on. We'll see Redis is not running. So we can pretty much tell that our script worked here. And let's just try one more server. Let's check out one of the application servers. I'll grab the IP address. We'll log in by that IP. And let's see, we should see PHP running, we do. We should see Nginx running, and we do. We should not see MySQL, it's not even installed. We shouldn't see Beanstalk. We shouldn't see Redis. We shouldn't see Postgre, and we don't. Great, so let's all set up and running. One thing we do still see, I think, is Supervisor. Yep, Supervisor is still running. It's not set up and running anything, but I don't usually turn that off in case I want to use that for something later. 
We'll get into that a little bit more when we set up our worker servers. But that's it for now. I just wanted to show you the recipes I use to make our servers a little bit more speedy, to make them be able to handle more resource load by shutting off services that we don't use.